So, you want to learn how to play Ireland. I made this in the first 100 years of the game. Five more years, but you know, it's pretty much on spot. On the way, we also made the Luck of the Irish achievement. Playing Ireland, there's a lot of RNG involved. So every time something happens, I will explain why I click it and what else could happen. So this guide can still help you, even though your RNG is very different. Okay, today, Ireland. I think a nation that not too many people play because it seems like a challenge. You kind of have to defeat England very early on and they are not too weak. They're actually one of the strongest other nations. I sit together with my chat. I found something that is still very RNG heavy, but not in the way you think. There are two things that are important for an island start, which are good ideas and the RNG factors I just spoke about. And the two major RNG factors are the alliances on island and the monarch points your ruler gets. You have a way easier game in Ireland if your heir becomes way better than when he's way worse. Alliances and monarchs. Uh, you personally only need one alliance and it's alliance with England. I tested it out a few times and they actually always agree. If it doesn't work this time, I guess I, guess I have to sit down and make a new strategy. I'm very, very certain that England always agrees and they even keep their alliance when they get the claims on you. So you will see while we do this. The early game is the most particular one. We have to be careful. I also mentioned ideas. I need to choose Tyrone. It is the nation with the best traditions right from the start because as i said monarch points are very influential on your game luck and i want to just decrease this by a little bit by choosing the nation with the best traditions so you don't need any ideas to be good right so you have infantry combat ability plus 10 percent and prestige gain which is just very very good for the early game otherwise i, I look through other nations they're, they're quite okay um some people said oh uh, kill the rail has good ideas if starting, I'm not gonna lie, the traditions at the beginning are kind of not good, like unrest and fort defense. I see that there is some better stuff coming up, but that's just RNG. I, I can't guarantee any player that he will get enough monarch points actually spend it on a lot of ideas. I don't want to risk that, so I'm just gonna say play Tyrone. You will have this starting tradition 100% and you don't need anything else to really win wars. So you can concentrate on tech if you have a bad ruler, right? I'm gonna make this an Iron Man game as always. And as you see, I already made test runs. Let me actually let me actually show you. Once again, I always show, show the test runs. This one, you see the ruler one, two, five. The rulers were kind of like this. So I had a lot of bad luck. Like you see, I got three into quantity ideas, and that's it. And the second run was I was blessed with the best rulers that ever existed. Everything is up to date. This is my worst ruler I ever got. The other ones were like six, five, six, and stuff like that. So I have like a best and a worst case scenario. Now, let's start this game. Tyrone, Iron Man mode. Let's start with the situation. You have 4k troops. You have a lot of neighbors. I either always have the situation that Ulster always allies themselves with England or Scotland or they get guaranteed. So early on making spy networks, you can kind of skip Ulster. I will just build spy networks over here and here. That's the diplomatic situation. And also I will try to get an alliance with England. If it doesn't work right now, I will try to come back later. But yeah, apparently they don't love me too much. They have a hostile attitude. Actually, yeah, they actually claim my land. Um, hostile attitude is something very temporary that can always change. So if we grow in power, they didn't rival us or anything. We can just improve our relations with them. Priority right now is to grow. So ignore that. They will not declare on you anyway. They have no claim and they will get no claim in any time soon. The unluckiest situation that can always happen is that the War of the Roses doesn't happen because it gets an early heir and his current ruler dies, which I had in the second run, where I had a lot of bad luck, and that he doesn't go into the war with France. Because the condition for his claims over here, if you don't know, is that he has a large manpower pool and full army. England doesn't have that at the beginning, and they have a lot of bad events, like the War of the Roses drains a lot of manpower from it with events and stability. So, yeah, the best case scenario is they go to war with France and of the War of the Roses, because then you have like ages before they get any claims and then you can just build up relations. And once you have really good relations with him, he never really claims you or attacks you. So you can actually use him to, to clear wars like Scotland. I will show you later how this exactly works, but just, you know, um, don't get stressed about it if they're hostile. I actually like this because this way I can show you something seems to be going wrong, but at the end it really doesn't matter. I like to do these guides with, you know, not needing to restart. That's kind of the, the strategy behind my guide here okay i always create the monarch as a leader and use the mill points this time the military leader that i made with my mill points is way better i'm just gonna choose him he's like a very speedy boy in combination with a lot of shock that makes him quite good and quite fast okay going into estates of course start with giving all of this like the plus on monarch points are so helpful in the beginning especially with your current rulers which aren't too good then what i like to do is to to seize land right now the problem is I seized land before I did all of this and for some reason sometimes it doesn't go up to the 5% you still need right now. You will see why. But I do it now and I got 5% crown land. 
before I do this, sometimes it's 4.999, something like that. Just not just quite the 5% we need. And you need to you need to develop one province, just do it afterwards, because now you can choose religious culture. In Ireland, we don't have a problem with the Reformation. So this flat bonus with plus 10% everywhere, minus unrest problems, is very good. So we just gotta choose it. Because we're in OPM at the start, which is a one province minor if you don't know, we can just conquer a lot of land and that will give us a lot of crown land back. You will see in a bit. I will show it after the first few wars how much land we actually already got back. Bigger nations, that's not too easy to do, but with our size, it's quite easy to pull off. So in the background, I just chose uh, religious diplomats, which is just nice because people like you more this way. I will choose the supremacy over the crown because it's very nice to just have more loyal estates. And then over here, the only thing I really choose is patronage of the art. Take it out. It just gives you an easy mission most of the time. In every other campaign right now, I would choose burger loans. But in this case, it really doesn't matter because we have uh, four ducat loans and that's, that's just nothing. <laughs> so... Uh, you're better off just conquering a few provinces and then take Perga loans to pay off your four ducat uh, loans you made at the beginning. So just accept the first few loans. I mean, you see, you can have up to 128 bank loans at the same time. <laughs> so uh, you're safe for a while, let me just say that. We just need your initial money to make a little bit of purchases, but that's it. And that, that first purchase is a free company. And you don't have the manpower pool that you can build up your army as much as I like. This time we're gonna work with the mercs. There's a lot of uprisings in Ireland. Insert joke here. Yeah, and you gotta live with that. By the way, I also don't choose my rivals immediately because I always feel like if you choose your rivals, you're more commonly hackboxed by other nations, which means, you know, they make alliances, especially for the player. This is when player talk about hackboxing. Just be careful there. Just use your dip points. Just don't use your mill points because you need them to kind of rush ahead. Talking about mill points. Go mill focus. Like the Byzantium guide, if you are ahead in middle tech, you have a way easier time around here. And you actually have the bonuses this time. Your neighbor is not the Ottomans, but the English, <laughs> which are less busted at the beginning. Yet yeah, they're still strong, and yet yeah, they have a lot of army, but the army is not crazy strong. Like the Ottoman army is just, I want to cry, but this is survivable. This heir, you don't want him. I'm not 100% sure if he's RNG or not, but if he's like that, just, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do worst case scenario. I'm gonna risk the prestige drop. So I'm just gonna, you know, kick him out. Hope for a better successor. It's always scary to do this. We're gonna unpause now and see how everything develops. And yeah, we're still alive. Okay. I don't know what I'm waiting for. Maybe the game exploding or something, but <laughs> ignore all royal marriages, by the way. You don't want any friends. You just want England and that's it. This time, Ulster actually didn't get huge alliances. Let me check. He is actually allied with nations oh look it changed england i i think probably this changed because of my religious diplomats but england is now ready to be a friend of mine royal marriage and everything he changed his policy he's now more focused down here as i told you just because they're unfriendly in the beginning it actually doesn't mean that he will be aggressive all the time i just see okay ofelli he choose that as a friend he is an ally so i can't attack this anyways i stop building a spy network here um i just use my diplomat to get the alliance if the dip slots are full, just attack one of his allies indirectly through an ally from him. I just see who is he allied with. He's allied with Monster. So in that case, I would declare war on Monster. And this way call him Leinster 2 and next them. This way he would lose his diplomatic relations with him. And a slot is free for me. England is not really angry about this because they haven't been involved in the war. Just a little bit, you know, AE you get from doing this. But all in all, if you improve relations, you should get easily an alliance. They do always tend to ally Irish nations, but that doesn't mean that it's the end of the game. As I said, these guides are not for reloading until the situation is perfect. These guides are for start up the game. I experience what happened and I, I just teach you. <laughs> So, yeah, I like to make these guides just playing bad, see what goes wrong, and then just build up from that. <laughs> I mean, if you want to see that live and how often I just get spanked from the AI when I do my test runs, just join the streams. Feel free to do that. As always, I'll link the streams below. If you want to join, join. If you just want to see the YouTube stuff, totally fine. I appreciate all the converts lately. That's actually very unlucky. Look, the, the one nation over here is allied with Denmark. I haven't seen this before. And that, that that's actually makes me happy that I see it now. Because that means I can warn you. Apparently, this sometimes happens. That's called a hack box. Now we know what we're talking about here, right? Because normally, why would the Danish AI ally this? I can tell you why. Because a player is here, right? So, yeah. We've got to change our plans. I'm going to just stop the binary for over here. We're losing a bit of time, but it's fine. Um, we have no pressure. Because we're allied with um, England. And they will have probably most of the bad events. Because there is no air here. 
And that's the main condition for War of the Roses, right? At the same time, they still own main. So if they don't hand it over, they will have a large war with France. So those two things are still there. And in both things, you are not really involved. It's fine being allied with England now. Because if the war with France happens, he's going to be the aggressor. And he doesn't have enough favors with you to call you in. We will have an easy game just standing by and chilling. He will lose a lot of manpower and you can conquer Ireland. That's a fair trade. What we want to have with this one here is that they ally another Irish nation, which will happen at some point. Um, I could actually provoke this by, I guess, rivaling him. If I just rival nations that I want to see with other Irish nations together, it should be actually totally fine. I did my rivals now, so he could get potentially more allies because he knows I'm a threat. The bigger I become, the more likely it will become that he gets new allies. Seeing this event now, you will get spammed with this event. I said this in my last guide too. Don't click this. The 30% crown land you get back is not anywhere equal to the 25% minimum autonomy. You lose one fourth of all of your incomes, manpower, production, and taxes. And you don't get rid of this easily. Even though you get spammed, don't give them that. You get enough crown land back after your first war. If you don't get this event anymore, look forward to that, okay? We have our first claim. I'll check his allies. He's only allied with Munster. That's perfect. First targets you want to attack should be only one ally, otherwise you have a problem. I make this war goal now, stop the fabrication, and immediately just declare the war. Can I call belligerent too? I would call in line step. I don't know if I want that. So, okay, I will make it easy on myself and just say, okay, I declare this war without any co-belligerent and attack uh, line step later. Just rush in with all of your troops. You should win this, even though it doesn't look like it. I guess I just have very bad rolls. Actually, my rolls are decent. Yeah, but most of the time you do win this thanks to your early traditions. Look, this 10% infantry combat ability, that's the new meta at the moment. See, this is what I mean. I'm not the luckiest person here. I will try to get rid of this air. 4-4 four, four is nice, but a uh, 0 that I, I don't survive that, especially on military, where I really need good stats. I'll try to move my navy out. He has 4 ships out. I have 7, so I'll try to beat that. He will reinforce, so this is my retreat. This is a problem when you fight against two nations. When they reinforce, you basically just retreat. Otherwise, I, I killed one of his ships, but, you know, I can't win against 14, which is double my size. What I can do is I could rush this down now. But I would lose a lot of manpower, so I think I actually don't do this. What I will do is I will let my mercs stay here and let my other army move out because I don't have any each pips anyway, so it doesn't matter. If my mercs lose troops, I, I really don't care. If my regular army lose troops, it's actually very hurtful. I will just continue on claiming everything around me so I have an easier time taking it. This time I got lucky. England will burn a lot of troops over here. So if they hand it over, it's the run is not over, but this does help and gives you more time. In my test runs, England doesn't break the lines when you have good relation with them, which I mean like above 100 or something. This is a rough number, so try to keep it higher. Uh, but generally speaking, most of the time, even if they have claims on you and you own all of Ireland, they will not declare war on you or break their lines. In my experience, they just uh, keep the diplomatic demands over here, the provinces they want on Europe mainland. But you also see the AI is at war now, England, and it hasn't called me in because it's an offensive war. So, do, so they just fight and I can just sit back and chill. This siege is now done. I move out and I actually go for the next war target, which is over here. I will co-belligerate because they have no allies. I checked it before. Co-belligerate basically means they also are the main war target, which means I can annex them without getting more AE. Normally, if you annex land from allies, it's more expensive and it's more AE. AE being aggressive expansion. This time, if you co-belligerate them, you risk that their allies will also join and they don't have any other allies. So it's just basically free land for me. If you didn't notice, there you go. Just a heads up. <laughs> I will have to cancel one of these and now I can declare a war. Try to go in immediately. My army being a little bit weakened, but I am kind of hoping that my three shock leader will carry this. So I get a debuff, but I think it can't reinforce fast enough for this to be important. Okay, the rolls. Oh, he now lucky. Yeah, he doesn't join. That's good. I stack wipe this, very important, immediately, going to the next battle, you gotta keep the momentum going. Once again, very very good rolls, very good rolls, and yeah, I completely deleted him. What I will do now is I keep one army there and the other army on the other side so they can't build new troops. This way I kind of prevent more armies being built, and I can just siege all of the land without any problem. I go for prestige, and that allows me to get rid of that air and hope for a better one. So. Both sieges are done now. I'm just gonna separately piece them out because it's all coastland. I can. I do a separately piece so I get more money if I piece out only him and take this land too. I will not get the money from this nation too. I'll just piece out him. Bam. Get the money there. I'll piece out him. Bam. Get some more money here, which actually gives me a buffer. Very nice. Now seeing the crown land, I got actually 7% crown land from this first few conquests. 
I think that's enough that I don't get spammed with the event anymore to give land up. I got this way too often. <laughs> I got it five times for the sieging, and that was very fast sieges. If you look at the date, not a lot of time has passed. The game likes to spam you with these. Not a big fan. Gotta say, not a big fan. My next few conquests gonna be Limerick over here, then over to Cork. Here, I get a war with Kildrail too, which means I can take these two nations, and I avoid the war with Scotland. At Desmond, I will attack, cause this way I get Offlay, which is allied to England. And if I don't co-belligerate them, I can just easily get the land without calling in the allies. And the last war is going to be with Munster because I can get the rest of the nation. See, he's allied with Ormond and Leinster. Me piecing him out as soon as possible is actually of importance now. So I get the truce and it's done and over. I think this is the worst air I ever got with this event. I need an air and I get a 0-1-1. Oh, I just take the Papal Influence gladly. The money I get from the truces are very nice because it kind of gives me this buffer to more loans, right? I don't take any loans as long as this runs out and every time I conquer, I get a bigger loan. And at a certain point, it's just worth to take burger loans and pay off all the other loans with that. So it just have burger loans. It increased by nine targets already and we only took two provinces, which is very nice. Uh, my claims are now done. I will now declare this war. Can't co at Kildrail because it will call in Scotland. Now check if I can go to Kildrail. They actually like me, so they will probably give me military access. Yeah. Let's do that. Go over here. Immediately stomp both armies so they can't be a problem in the future. Oh my god, I'm unlucky here. Wow. Okay, we did it. But he gets a chance to run. So I'll take my stronger army, run behind him. Um, even though they can't siege yet, I will just keep them on so they can't build any new troops and just, you know, try to siege. New Miltech. Very good. We are up to date with Miltech. This is the first bonuses you get here are very important. Waiting for the siege is not to complete, then I'll be back. Oh, what happened here? A conquest. England doesn't help him, so Desmond declared a conquest on Leinster. That's very good, because Leinster has no friend besides England, and apparently Munster, who didn't help because I don't know why. This actually allows me to take it from him once he has won this war, and he probably will. So this makes this way easier. Now I can just attack his ally, like Ormond, and win it that way. That's really good. That's good luck. Just want to say that is luck, because, you know, it is. The early wars are a little bit back and forth, try to outplay alliances against each other. So this is why I say it's very much RNG, but at the same time, you don't need to reroll every time, because in my experience, there's always an alliance you could exploit at some point. If it's like allied with England or Scotland, you can do something to attack him and get the land. So... Yeah, this is why I still feel comfortable making this guide, because yeah, it's very RNG, but it's not enough. The RNG is not the main reason if you can do it or not. It just makes it easier or harder. And in this case, I'm kind of in the middle, because I have some stuff that helps me, and I have some stuff that's actually against me, and I can show a lot of stuff that could potentially happen. Um, I like that. I like if I'm not getting the best case scenario. If I would get a best case scenario for a guide, I would literally just restart, because that doesn't help anyone. Actually trying to roll now for a Siege Pip leader. I'll take that. Wow. Once again, that was luck. <laughs> but you know what? That's luck that I'd actually take. The sieges are done now. That's amazing. I can't really peace out yet because I can't take this land. I have no land border or sea border. So what I have to do now is to declare war here. I will go on Desmond. I will co belligerent offlay, and I will demand Cork. The war goal is easier to take AE wise, right? And we also have claims, which makes it easy again. This is why I like to claim everything in Ireland, even though I don't need to. You also have a mission tree, by the way. I haven't talked about this yet, but it's not very interesting. It's basically, you own all of this, you get some claims. You own all of this, you get some claims. But I wouldn't work how this wants you to work. I would just work like how I did it. Just use the situation to make your claims manually. These are not too important and you get finish these missions anyway. Just want the stuff below here and you get that by uniting Ireland naturally anyway, right? And the most important thing you want to have in Ireland is the potato. We all know wouldn't be a real Ireland run without having the potatoes. I think we all work towards this in the end game, don't we? Ah, a strategy I could show you right now. Kind of funny. I just saw that Offlay declared war on Limerick. That means the AI saw, oh, this province is weakened and I see you down, no army. So they're like, okay, if you let if you leave something over, I wanna take that. If I, if I see there's no chance, he has no allies, I can't attack him, and I, but I still wanna have his land, right? What I could do is go in here subjugate this province say okay limerick i wanna subjugate you he will become my vassal and all of his defensive force would become my defensive force so in this situation i would get a defensive war against ormond and offlay and i could just easily kill them it's two different wars right they're not really allies in this situation they're just both attacking the same nation and because they are an aggressor the allies don't help them which is 
Very good. I could have done this up here, tried to bait at him to attack this and not an exit directly, but I, I want to keep this guard going. I'm just telling you strats that you can potentially use. Just be careful. Double check who that war. If in some very rare scenario, England or a great power joins, maybe double check that first, right? But most of the time, you just get the land for free. So, declaring this war now, co belligerate them. France is still bullying England, so they won't join. And I attack for core. And I try to keep an army between them. So when I attack, they can't merge up. Kind of helps a lot. They will try to reinforce this, but most of the time they will not be there in time or it will be so weakened that they can't. See, they already turned around. You see the battle, they're like, okay, I will not join that. Yeah, he had two zero walls. So I'm actually just stack wiping him. That's amazing. I'm going to take the non merc army down here because I can split it up. So I can stop uh, this unit being constructed, right? And this, I got this event. Actually, every run so far. Uh, maybe the wars increased the chance of getting this event. But not going to lie. It's so good. You spend, you spend a little bit of splendor, a little bit of admin, a little bit of money, and you get more of army, yearly armor tradition, and yearly prestige. All stuff that helps you a lot in wars. Just take it. Very good. Stays around for 20 years. Yeah, so really good. What What is wrong with my rulers here? Donald again with 044. It's just the other way around. Oh my god. I, I'm kind of happy that I get worst case scenario here, right? But man, I'm not gonna have any idea groups here. <laughs> yeah. All sieges are done. So we'll peace out here now. Don't forget, always peace out the ally first. So you get double money. And then the main war goal. So we have 130 ducats just from this peace outs here. So that's quite a lot. I can even finish two missions and that give me more claims. So I actually have a claim on Desmond now. Very nice. But Desmond actually can't afford the fort anymore. So they deleted it, which makes the conquest way easier. And wait, what? I've never seen this before. <laughs> England was forced to release this. I don't know what happened. I don't know, but this is actually very funny because this makes forming Ireland a lot easier. I will still declare war on England, right? But you know what? I'm going to take this one. Problem is, once England really expands into Scotland, I have a problem anyway. So I got to work with the normal strat anyway. If that happens, take the win. This happens not often. Uh, in all of my test runs, never saw this. There is war. I can't co Münster because of the truce, but I actually don't care. I don't want to wait for another five years. So I'm just going to go in. I'll co them and just siege them. I'm actually going to start making claims on Scotland right now. And I would suggest to you do the same as soon as you're like kind of done with Ireland and what you can do over here. Go into Scotland. But sometimes England gets earlier war goals over here and then they will just attack manually. You don't want that. Don't risk it. And at this point, because I got so much money, I will actually make a naval build up right now. I still have my seven light ships. So I think together with eight galleys, it should work out. Yes, I'm over naval limit, but this is not about money yet. This is all about winning and not dying. So, the rebellions already start, and you can try to suppress this um, to save some manpower, but I actually think with my current general, I'll just try to kill them. Yeah, I should be fine. The only problem, when these rebels rise up, they delete all of your huge galleys. So I actually lost like 20 ducats here. Be careful about that. By the way, we haven't taken any burger loans yet, so... I tend to take it as soon as I have all of Ireland united because then I have actually a good amount of burger loans that are very helpful. If you don't have any money right now, buy the navy with burger loans. Take it a little bit earlier, you know. Oh, first stuff here. Amazing. We'll take the manpower modifier for obvious reasons. Now we have to clean up Ireland a little bit because the rebellion start now. <laughs> this is a natural thing for Ireland. Trust me. I played here a few times. As, as I said, if your army is not strong enough, just use your mill point. Suppress it a little bit and buy yourself more time. It does buy enough time that it's actually worth. Yeah, and I'm just hoping that I'll, I'm really happy that I still have my mercs. And that I still have a large manpower pool because of them. Because they help me so much suppressing these rebels now. And I will take the burger loans now. The time has come. Oh, that's nice. That's way that's way better than if you have four ducat loans, right? <laughs> 47. Put a 7 at the end of that. I will take care of the rebels now, and as soon as we go into war against Scotland or anything else happens, I'll just we'll meet up there. Okay, I could actually just wait for France to be very busy, which they are, and then declare, because I can handle these two. And my navy is stronger than the Scottish one. I can actually prove that. That's just transport ships. That's not his navy. I will actually show you his. Navy. It could be that he actually just has transport ships at the moment. No, up here. Look, eleven light ships. My seven light ships and eight galleys are better than his eleven light ships. You look over here. This is coast. Galleys will be slightly more efficient here. Not way more efficient, but slightly more efficient. It's not inland seas, it's just coast. Would be harder when France joins, but right now France like to do early wars against Castile, against Burgundy, against Austria, stuff like that. Two scenarios where you can declare war in Scotland. Both work. Once again, this is why I make this guide. This is why I tell you. My scenario, England is weak, so I have to declare war in Scotland myself. 
which means I have a lot of time because England takes a lot of time to get out of their weakness. They had full ravages of War of the Roses and they have full on a war with France, right? So they won't join. That is totally fine. In my scenario, I wait for France to be busy and then attack Scotland. And France is right now busy anyways, so I'm just going to wait for him to burn manpower and money. Then I can just declare easy win. Second scenario, England is very strong. They still own this most of the time anyway. They have a lot of manpower and they're about to attack Scotland. And you see this when the army marches up to Scotland, that they will declare war on them. You go over here, make these claims anyways, and you just call them in. And then you make the peace treaty, right? Like you occupy everything, like here, just demand this north, promise them these two provinces or whatever. You don't even need to promise them land. You have at this point very good favors with him. Uh, the 10 favors needed for them to join you are already there. Two scenarios, both work, both different RNG, but no restart needed. That's the important part here. No restart needed. Okay, as always, if you have any additions or different ideas, I don't watch other guides before I do this. So I'm actually just trying to make this with my stream chat. Feel free to share them in the comments. Um, I don't build up on guides of other YouTubers. I'll just try to make my own stuff, which means my strategy. Also, it, it always works, right? But it must not be always the most efficient way. Share your strategies. I'm happy to hear them. Maybe you help another player. Under the Byzantium videos, there were a lot of good ideas. I really appreciate the feedback over there, really. Thank you for the support there. I didn't expect it to blow up like that. And it's good to hear that I could help a few of you, right? <laughs> Is this the point of the video where YouTuber says like and subscribe on that stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Like, if you want to, feel free. It's very on the edge because France is not far away from piecing out Burgundy, but at the same time, they're really, they're also not far away from not joining this war anymore. So I think there's like a one second where they say, okay, we will not help. And then I'll declare immediately. They just peace out. But for some reason, this is in the negative now. Ooh, so I'm going to attack, I guess, just here, right? Bam, declare war, France. Doesn't join. Okay. No, as I said, uh, for this scenario, you, I don't need to be in a rush. I just want to wrap up the, the guide. I, I could have waited for the next war against France, which will happen very soon. France likes to go into early wars and, and it won't help Scotland because, you know, they're just out of money. They have lucky nations, but that doesn't make them invulnerable. This is actually really cool. He crossed with one army and that basically means this army is stuck, you know. What I can do now is build up my army a little bit more, like two infantrymen, right? I, don't, I want to attack him with a way bigger army, right? Don't allow him to siege on this, because if he controls both sides, he can just walk over, right? Like, if he only controls one side and you control a straight, you can block the rest of his army. If he controls both sides, you have a problem. Just as a heads up. Oh! Yeah, stack wipe. Opening up for the next army. You want to come over? <laughs> I guess not. Uh, what I can do now is bring out the, my fleet and reach this. This is why with this large navy, I can just do stuff like that. Could rush it down, but it would be very, very hurtful for my manpower pool. So just don't do it. While this war is going on, you can always separate piece him as soon as he says yes. He says yes, so I'm just going to separate piece him right now and take all the money he can give. So Ireland is officially now reunited. Taking this, I'll take this now. I will not take this because I want to make this guy as realistic as possible. At this point, I haven't been at war with England. I haven't gained any land, so I would potentially not have this. I got lucky, of course. I have it already. But for this guide, I will not take this mission until I've won my first war against England. Just to keep it more realistic, right? Let me just try to take the other fort now. England still being busy fighting against himself. Very good to see. Scotland probably not having enough money to rebuild their army. So that's also very nice to see. This time I can't barrage because it's a fort and a capital city. So yeah. Okay, finally getting another tech into number four. Dip, admin tech still looking very dire. My priority is kind of take this, so England can't. But take this, he probably is not interested in the land, is he? No. He's actually not interested in any Scottish land. He likes me so much, if I say I want all of the Scottish land, he's like, okay, then I, then I don't want Scotland. <laughs> I just want... It's just very specifically, very, very specifically, he wants all of the French land. <laughs> you can really make them work for you, right? This, this guide is mostly for making the English AI work for you in one or the other way. Either keeping them down or letting them win your wars for you. So 99% on Scotland. I'm actually going to see how much I can take here. Um, looks like only coalition I would get is with Scotland. So that doesn't matter. I will take all of this land because I need I need to grow strong now. So be greedy. Take as much as you want. So we're slowly going to think about fighting England now, right? Because I want to do one more war against Scotland. Could be that I'm unlucky and Norway will attack on them or Denmark. But for now, I want to go into alliance like Iberia. Castile, very strong, most of the time. And with most of the time, is every time I tried it so far, they will agree to an alliance with you. Why? I don't know. But they are very good to take out Portugal. 
to just go in, query favors with them. They're most of the time very willing to help you. And I think if they are not willing to help you, France is. France also doesn't hate me. The only reason they hate me now is AE and um, Castile. If you don't get Castile, try France. You just want to have a one mainland power. You don't need it, but it's nice someone to take care of Portugal. In my scenario, I don't need it. Portugal got taken care of. Wait, what? Be careful. Be very, very careful. You have an air. <laughs> I have a succession war. Oh no. I'm just gonna be mean, right? My game crashed. <laughs> Hey, we're back in the game. <laughs> My game crashed. You wouldn't believe. Okay, be careful about airs. Gotta learn that the hard way. Gave myself a second chance. 52 years old, plus being allied to two major powers. There's a chance that you're being inherited. Be careful about that. I'm just gonna pray that I get an air now, okay? Talking about praying to get an air. <laughs> I think I'm not even gonna cut this. This is just... One thing, I'll take him. He's actually better than anything I had before. Once again, I do mistakes, so you don't, okay? Some stuff I'm lucky about, some stuff I'm really not lucky about. You could be so much more lucky about your dynasty or your heirs because I'm just living with this all the time and it does hurt a lot. 24 years after this out of the game, I'm still sitting on admin tech 3, right? <laughs> Didn't develop anything, I'm just scoring here. It's not too important for the war against England. I could even just go into the new Miltech now. I think I'm actually gonna do that. Which gives me... Yes, this gives me corruption because of unbalanced research. But I gotta take everything I need against England that I get. So I'm just gonna take that. Doesn't matter. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I have now a regency and I have a problem. Because I have a peasant war upcoming. Not so cool. Oh, now we can't declare wars for the next 10 years because our regency died. Because now, look at this. Can't declare wars. Well, you have a Regency Council. Oh my god. Normally you would have a war goal in England at any point, but because I already own the island, which is the war goal you get on them, I will make a spy network and try to fabricate claims. And my main goal will be to release Wales as a puppet and also Northumberland, so I can just reconquer of land. This is very high value land over here. Not too, but still, you know, you don't want more E than you need to. And the puppet is more manpower because it can have more army. So it's just nice to have them around. And I will actually go into monthly autonomy change because over here in the British Isles are not too many cultures. So I'll actually choose that. Ooh, admin tech 4 at 1479. Ooh. <laughs> England would actually join. <laughs> nope. How much can I take? Okay, now I will take everything plus money because I do be not too good with economy right now. Okay, I think this is the point where we think about um, backstabbing the British, quote-unquote. I can do this easily by making them a rival, which will cancel the alliance immediately. Uh, not the royal marriage, but, you know, that should happen naturally. He will probably think about backstabbing me now. The good thing is I have the Spanish on my side, so he will not attack me. If, if he attacks you, just get the grand company or something, um, take a few loans, play your cards right, play defensive in the mountains, roll for better leaders, and you should be totally fine. Um, it's even better if he attacks you because then he can't call in his allies, right? And as soon as I tagged up with Miltagger and I'm equal to England, and the truce is over, I will just immediately attack and show you how easy this actually is. Oh! Wow! I've never seen this before. They still actually lost the royal marriage with Aragon. So... England allied Aragon. So Aragon is gonna be my Portugal over here. Um, Castile will still kill it very easily because the capital city is right next to it. But I'm still happy that I got the alliance. Year 4 is a very big RNG game. So um, yeah, get these alliances. If not Castile, then France. Um, you'll need it. Trust me. Very helpful. So finally, can go into quantity ideas. I very much urge you to take this because of the manpower and at the end the land force limit modifier you could already have this idea completely done by this point uh i was just very unlucky with my monarch they very soon end this war then i will declare war against the english and if not i'll actually pay the loans it's fine 99 percent come on yeah good so you want to join my war or exhaustion how about us to prepare for war and that gives me enough yeah, plus 20. All I mean, we'll declare war for Northumberland because it's a nice fort that we can just storm down. His navy is way stronger, by the way. Don't try to fight his navy at this, at this point. If you were able to rush him down earlier, fine. At this point, his navy is very strong. Don't do it. A steal. Northumberland. Declare war. Go into this. Our goal is to rush down this fort as fast as we can. And I think we can do it without 
rushing it down literally. Because he's too scared of my army. Okay, Ford has been sieged. I will try to walk around him. Can I scout if he has troops behind him? His army arrives over there on the 30th. I arrive on the 1st and he arrives on the 27th. So I can just stack wipe this. Could have attacked the fort. I thought we would be faster, but you know, it is what it is. We bought a lot of time with this fort. I just don't want him to immediately go in and just siege it down. I was successful with that. We have a very big manpower pool. So he, he really needs some time to kill this. Thanks for the timing, Scottish Uprising. I love you too. Both of you. <laughs> okay, I don't have time to deal with them. I will do that later. My goal now is to kill this army. Manpower recovery speed. Good timing for that, isn't it? Go in now. Probably provoke him to... No, actually, he doesn't do anything. Good. He has way more moral. So in this case, look for an advisor. The best thing you can get is a disciplined advisor. It was closer than I wished it to be. But, you know, this defense... This is why I like to rush this forward. You get very easy defensive battles. He's like a moth with a light bulb that tries to siege this back immediately. Very nice. If your garrison is below 100, and you see your garrison below here, right? If it's below 100, they can just siege it immediately. They, even if it's minus, they can win immediately. And it takes a little bit down while sieging. But after you siege this, maybe stay on it for a little bit. Buy yourself some time. Make it hard for him to siege this. And just, I will kill these rebels now, because they do be getting annoying now. And I don't want unrest everywhere. I have the manpower pool I just need at the time. My army is not strong enough. And I lost my leader. So yeah, my <laughs> I really need a good leader now. I'm going to try something stupid. Oh, uh, okay. He, he, he knows. My leader dying here is a lot of bad luck. But you, you got to take the luck you get, right? Yeah, discipline. This is so good. Game changer. Oh my god, my lord. I have so much bad luck here. It's crazy. It's crazy how much bad luck I have. The army is so weakened though. That's amazing. Harry Donald is worse than the other. Oh my god. Oh, I'm at war with the Pope. Let's just peace out the Pope and give him land. Like, you know, you get this and you get this. I peace out the Pope. I get this. Anything else that helps me. Yeah, moral of armies plus 10%. Yeah. I'm gonna get the Grand Company. Economy is temporary. Ireland is forever. As long as you don't have as much bad luck as me in the beginning, you would be totally fine here. I'm trying to give England a distraction over here by forcing him to re defend this position. Actually just ignoring it. Funny way, this also works. Yeah, we defended the fort. Let's go. Locked here. Probably could kill that. Not really. Sad. Let's up this hopefully now. Come on. Come on. Yeah. One of battles I have to fight here just to kill the English. I mean, they're probably as bad as me right now, man, right? Let me check war enemies. He has less manpower, he has less mercs, but he's kind of dying. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna cut my losses here. To be fair, I could take like way more money. Look over here. I could take up to 210 ducats, which I would get half of. But I'm just gonna be fair because I would potentially take meat and stuff like that. I'm just gonna cut my losses. Peace out here. Get the stuff I want. Delete my mercs so I can actually recover my economy. And we'll take this now. Bam. And at the same time, conquer the Highlands. The manpower I need this. Conquer of Scotland. Uh, army tradition i will take this as soon as the next war starts for now i'll just literally try to recover my army because uh, i just I, I need to recover everything over here okay the truce of england ended i just want to punch him down as long as he's down my economy is not great but the war goal is kind of here to demand a lot of money and some land england's manpower is still very bad his army is way bigger at the moment though so i think about getting two loans getting a good amount of troops here at the same time, I will finish this mission now, get 10% army tradition, and will try to re-roll some of these leaders and pray for a better one. I guess that one is decent, still far away from what we could have gotten, but I'm not going to complain about a leader that is overall not too bad. Waiting for these troops to be built, um, waiting for this army to not trade anymore, and then actually just going in and try to beat the British without them having the ability to hide behind forts, right? Because that was actually quite annoying. Uh, there were a lot of mom moments we could have just stack wiped them and they just got away. So, army is ready again. By the way, I took uh, economy ideas because um, I need an economy. I'll try. I'll try to go in, rush down the British and then, you know, while they have little manpower, just go in. My manpower is actually quite decent at the moment. Just try to kill all the small armies before they can form up and become bigger armies, right? Actually, look, he's hiding in London. Bam, stack wiped. Yeah, okay, this is quite easy now. <laughs> At least 42. Yeah, Siege of London done. I'm going to try to relieve my Siege up here in the north. Uh, he does have more men, but this is mostly mercs. So, what do we want to take? Firstly, we're going to just take all the free stuff, which is, you know, that, 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 that. Bam, bam, bam. That's all the free stuff. Then, money. We need a lot of it. Got to repair those war debts. They would actually agree to this. Uh, that will weaken them so much that the next war will be way too easy. No one 
No one cares, so I'm just gonna do this. Let them keep their weak allies, that's fine. And yeah, get the sheeps. <laughs> so, years have passed, my truce with England just ended. I integrated Northumberland because I can. It was a little bit harder because let's just see, <laughs> my leader doesn't really help me there. I'm gonna keep Wales around a little bit longer, just to bully England a little bit. I'm gonna start to pay for my army, and I feel like we're about to nearly extinct the English in the next war. I say we go in now. Actually, Wales claim stuff? <laughs> Wales claimed everything over here. Oh, they know they're the real British and they, they, they show it. So I will go in for an easy war goal. Actually something expensive because it becomes cheaper to take. He has a lot of allies, but they're, you know, they're across the ocean. So he can't really expect help from them. He's pretty much on his own and he is way weaker than before. I feel like that was a nice conquest of England. <laughs> Um, did any allies land any troops on my land? Actually, no. They just naval blockade. Okay. Oh, we have colonialism. Easy. Not an institution. Should help with everything. I actually make a good amount of money now after recovering over here. Because I nearly make eight ducats. I pay for everything fully, even the forts, even navy. Amazing, actually, right? So this one period of just recovering a few years was amazing for me. As I said, if I haven't been so bad in the first war against England... I would have had a way easier time, but it just shows a war like this is not an end. Just end it earlier than you wanted to. Take what you take what you want, and then just strike a second time and be better prepared. The blockades are actually really annoying. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about being. I'm actually gonna do this. You know what? Going into here, I'm selling some crownlet. I'm going to build up a heavy ship navy. I have enough of this. They think they can bully me. They think they can push me. I will retaliate. So, oh, my ships have been built. Just waiting a little bit for the moral to take up. More should be full now. So, how about we stomp the enemy navies for a change and show them who's boss? Now we clean up England naval power, a thing of the past. Nothing but a dream left of them. Okay. Seeing this, demand a little bit of money. Who's out? I can actually become a kingdom now. So, my rank changed from kingdom to kingdom. Amazing. I am not going to core this yet because I'm so close to get my level 10 admin tech, which allows me to become the beautiful nation of Ireland. Finally, admin tech 10, taking it now. A little bit late, but look at this, Ireland. Ah, oh, finally, the green. Yes, for this, <laughs> I like these ideas, I actually love them, but you know what? If you play Ireland, we play Ireland. I'll change over. You can definitely see by the old ideas. Um, they're very good, as I showed you. Ch now we get Moral of Armies, which was better back in the day, but the trade efficiency is very nice. And later on, you get stuff like Discipline here. Very cool. It is just a little bit more of an economic build this year, um, and a little bit more of an internal build. The other one is better for early expansion, so I'm just going to trade this. But you absolutely knew right with, to stay with the other idea set. Very good. By the way, with now being Ireland, I noticed something quite interesting. We are kind of right now the new great britain we control all of this right now I, I build a few more we have like 12 heavy ships so i think we have the biggest navy in the region this scary aggressive expansion number that appears here with england austria and france attacking me actually doesn't matter i think about just truce breaking this go in balls against the wall and annex the rest of great britain in one big war not wasting any more time right demand london itself and declare this war Drop in stability hurts, but you know what? It's, we were actually three stability, so this is fine. Ireland taking over the UK. The good ending. <laughs> they have a good admiral, but uh, my navy should just be way stronger than his. Yeah, look at this. Bum, bum, bum. Integrated Wales. Oh, it's all coming together. I hope I can take everything now, otherwise this will be annoying. <laughs> Why is it so much? Okay, I will, I will risk a vault coalition for this. How much AE do I get in this case? <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna build a few more heavy ships just to be on the safe side. Also, I will choose break again. I will do it and you can't stop me. Cool, war score with England. Once again, demanding money. Bum, this is done. Reading real fast what I need. And I will literally just declare war again once I can. Hi. Okay, who's in the coalition now? Ah, that's what I want to see. That's a real coalition. Right. The Polish sent me money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Polish are like, oh my, I love what you're doing, Alan. Do continue, continue. Piss off the entire HRE. You're, you're the chat. Perfect. Bum. And next, the English. 
gonna click the last mission, Rule Britannia for 40 years, Mortal of Nameless, Heavy Ship Combat Ability, Chippling Time, Yearly Prestige, Ship Cost, and Yearly Legitimacy. Oh, I apparently inherited English Brazil. Wow, I'm not a rightful ruler of English Brazil. No, so, achievement? Where are you? There we go. Luck of the Irish. Um, good thing I haven't had this achievement yet. As I said, I haven't played a lot of Ireland before that. And I thought, why not make it in the recording? I uh, hope you enjoyed the guide. I edited it probably the end down very quickly because it was a little bit annoying. Yeah. Otherwise, I wish you all a good time. Thanks for watching. And yeah, maybe check another video out if you feel like it. I made this amazing Byzantium guide. Bye.